In today's video, I'll talk to you about phase diagrams and liquid crystals. Phase diagrams, the diagrams of a phase. This picture is called a phase diagram. It has lots of cute little words, colors, and fa fancy arrows. But what do they mean? Well, a phase diagram is a graphical way to summarize the conditions under which equilibria exist between different states of matter. Phase diagrams allow us to easily predict what phase a substance will be at a given temperature and pressure. The red curve is called the vapor pressure curve right here, and it shows the equilibrium between liquid and gas phases. You can see this kind of deeper blue is a liquid, and this yellowish color represents the gas phase. The point at which this curve is at one atmosphere is the normal boiling point for the substance. The curve ends at this critical point, which you can see right here. Beyond the critical point, the liquid and gas phases are indistinguishable, and the substance is said to be a supercritical fluid. The green curve right down here is the sublimation curve. That shows the equilibrium between solid and gas phases. The blue curve, called the melting curve, shows the equilibrium between solid and liquid phases. Increasing pressure usually favors more of the solid phase. Thus, at high pressures, increased temperature is required to melt a solid. The melting point at one atmosphere is called the normal melting point. Point T, right here, where all of the curves intersect, is called the triple point, where all three phases are in equilibrium. Any other point on any of the three curves represents an equilibrium between just two phases. Now, I realize that this might be unclear. Let's take a look at a problem. The phase diagram of a hypothetical substance is shown here. Question A, estimate the normal boiling point and freezing point of the substance. And question B, what is the physical state of the substance under the following conditions? Please pause the video right here and attempt to do it on your own. You can then hit play and I'll show you the answer. So here's the answer. And this first question asks us to estimate the normal boiling point and normal freezing point of the substance. You should remember that the normal boiling point is the temperature at which this substance will convert from a liquid to a gas when you're at one atmosphere pressure. To answer this question, you just have to draw a horizontal line mentally all the way across this diagram, and then determine where it intersects the place between liquid and gas. Remember, liquid is this blue section, and gas is this sort of tan section. That point is roughly around here. If you trace that down to the temperature, you'll see that it's probably somewhere around 370, give or take a little bit. And I'm just estimating. The normal freezing point is the analogous point that separates solid, which is this lighter blue, with liquid, the point at which a substance will freeze. So you trace that one atmosphere line all the way across, find where it intersects this blue line between solid and liquid phases, and then trace it down here to the temperature. In question B, it asks us, to identify the physical state, either liquid, gas, or solid, under the following conditions. The first one says a temperature of 150 Kelvin. Let's find where 150 Kelvin is on this phase diagram. It appears right here. As you trace up 150 Kelvin, you'll see that the substance is either going to be a gas or it's going to be a solid, depending on what the pressure is. And that's kind of interesting to imagine. What that really means is that if you have very, very low pressure at this temperature of 150, that substance is going to exist as a gas. However, as you start increasing pressure on that substance, squishing it down tighter and tighter and tighter, in other words, going up this vertical line at 150 degrees, you can get a point in which those individual molecules will lock and become a solid. And in this particular case, they never, ever become a liquid in between. Let's skip to the third example, where it tells me that temperature is 100 Kelvin and pressure is 0.8 atmospheres. I'll go to 100 Kelvin, and then I will trace vertically up to where 0.8 atmospheres is. Now, I'm not sure exactly where that is, but it is obviously going to be in the region of the phase diagram that corresponds to the substance being a solid, which means that at that temperature and pressure, this substance is a solid. Let's now look at the fourth example, where it says that temperature is 300 Kelvin and pressure is 1 atmosphere. If you go to 300 Kelvin and then trace vertically up to where it would intersect with one atmosphere, you can see that this substance is obviously going to be a liquid. Do you see how phase diagrams work? I hope so, because I think they're pretty darn cool. I now want to talk to you about liquid crystals, just because they're frankly cool. Some substances can exist under certain pressures and temperatures in a state that is somewhere in between that of a liquid and a solid. This state is called a liquid crystal state. Liquid crystals are often used as pressure and temperature sensors in devices like digital watches and laptops, as well as uh, tablets and things like that when you're playing Angry Birds. 
They can be used in these devices because the weak intermolecular forces holding their molecules together in the crystalline phase are easily affected by changes in temperature, pressure, and electric fields, including the temperature and pressure exerted by your finger on a screen. There are different types of liquid crystals, as we can see in this figure. There are actually more than just in this figure, which are shown more thoroughly in a separate figure in our text that I won't show here. The only reason that I'm showing this to you for the students who take this class for me is because I just think they're really cool and I want you to appreciate how neat they are. You don't have to memorize these structures, I just want you to appreciate them. You can answer a problem set question uh, that I'll give you by using this figure. And that's all I'm going to say about liquid crystals. That takes us to the end of chapter 11. I hope you've had an enjoyable time. I know I have. Until I, next time, remember, don't urinate in your tax returns, power of gray skull, mischief managed. I hope you have an enjoyable rest of your day.